So, hey, welcome to the Know It Agile Agent podcast. So, my name is Kari Kakkonen. I'm the host of the podcast. And today uh, I have two really excellent and famous visitors <laughs> here. I got Janet Gregory and Lisa Crispin. Hello. I'm, I'm glad to have you here. Hello. Oh, it's great to be here. Indeed it is. Uh, so uh, I think most of the world knows um, Janet and Lisa about their excellent Agile testing books, but may maybe you can introduce shortly yourselves. Uh, okay, I'll start. Um, I'm Janet Gregory, and I live in Canada, Western Canada. Uh, I What else do I need to know? I coach, um, I consult, I train all on the, uh, with the focus on testing in agile teams, uh, but work with teams, just trying to get them to transition and understand how to work and collaborate together. Yeah, and I'm Lisa Crispin. I, for the last few decades, I've mainly been a hands-on tester on mostly agile software teams, but in March, I went freelance. So now I'm dipping my toe into some consulting and training and um, helping Janet out with our agile testing fellowship company and I live really close to Canada in Vermont very close to Quebec on a little farm with uh, donkeys uh, dogs cats and my husband nice. close to Canada but still a long ways from where I am yes <laughs> well, in the east and she's in the west yeah exactly nice nice and I'm, I'm here in Helsinki in Finland very 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 east from all of both of you so. we love it Helsinki. Is, yeah. yes we do it's a beautiful city. So, um, agile testing. So, I think we can start with that. So, that that's like the bible of agile testing. <laughs> that's 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 how I always always talk about it when I talk talk to uh, testers in Finland or anywhere in the world. It's it's really the book that you should know when you are uh, about testing. And and I'm not saying just the first one, but also the other ones, of course. So, uh, how, how did it? Happen? Could you maybe rephrase uh, in your own words? How how did it come to be? Uh, why why did you write this book? Oh, I'll I'll take that one. I wrote a book called Testing. I co-wrote a book called Testing Extreme Programming back, which was published in two thousand three with Tip House. And the reason we wrote it was there were there were lots of publications about extreme programming and how it was all about quality and testing and all these good things. But there was nothing for testers on extreme programming teams. And so our motivation was to share our experiences and experiences of other people that we met like Janet um, with, pe with people who wanted to know how to do testing and be testers on extreme programming teams. And a few years later, my editor at Addison Wesley said, could you write, could you write that book again, but make it more general to agile testing? And my original co-author was not interested in writing another book, unfortunately. But fortunately, I I sort of berated Janet into doing it with me. <laughs> That's a good word. That's a good word. <laughs> but again, we were just trying to share how we and our teams, and, and of course, we've met people all around the world when, at conferences and things in our online community. What, what are the common problems? How have we overcome them? Because there are new problems to solve all the time. So we wanted to share all we could and set a foundation so that we could keep moving forward and people could solve the, the tougher problems. And we didn't want people to have to go through what we went through, trying to learn and figure it out ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that sort of feeling, reading a book, and I've read it multiple times. Re reading a book gets, you know, gives that feel. I know how how you want to convey that that uh, help to the world, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. And and how how did it come to be when you have a more agile testing and then we agile testing condensed? Yeah. So, Addison Wesley came back to us about five years after the first book was written and said, "Don't you think it's time for a second edition?" And we went through it and we looked and we went, "Actually." No, there's a few things we could update, but generally the information is still exactly the same. But we said we have learned so many things since that first book that hence the more agile testing, it goes deeper into some of the problems that teams see later, not when they're first transitioning, 
but as they, you know, get deeper into it. Um, so we also had in more agile testing, we really started looking at other people and how they solve the problems. So we have lots of stories from practitioners around the world in that book. The other thing is agile had, had grown, right? More and more companies yeah. were adapting it, especially big enterprise companies. And then we had new technology, more into mobile devices. And so we, we included all those things and mm -hmm. got, you know, we're not experts at everything, although we learned a lot reading that book. <laughs> but getting people we knew who, who were leading practitioners in these different areas to contribute their stories was really, really helpful. We have yes. 70 sidebars from 40 different practitioners around the world in there. I think that's everybody's favorite part of the book. That, yes, for sure mine. Yeah. <laughs> very, very impressive. I also noticed that you get the translations of, of the um, uh, Agile in Condensed, right? The, yeah, the, the Condensed book came about because people don't read big books anymore, and those two books are really big. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we worked really hard, especially Janet, Janet did the heavy lifting on the Condensed mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. to take what was in both those books, plus all the things we'd learned since, because it had been, what, five years since our previous book when we wrote Condensed. Um, but we we were able to self-publish that so that we could have more translations. You know, the big publishers don't always want to translate into every language that people ask for. So it gave us a lot of freedom to have, you know, people we knew offered, hey, we'll translate it into this language or that language, which has been yeah. great. Our biggest struggle with Agile Testing Condensed was to keep it really small. Mm -hmm. We we had a goal that said no more than 100 pages mm -hmm. because one of the audiences that we were missing in the first two were managers. They truly don't want to pick up a heavy-duty 500-page book, right? 500 pages. Yeah. Um, so yeah. By, by having a, a smaller one where they could read um, and say, if you want to know more about this, then go to the bigger books. Mm -hmm. But here's an overview really is, is good, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's lots of demand for that sort of a book. Manager mm -hmm. needs to know about testing as well. Oh, for sure. Because a lot of the problems that um, people are having on Teams is that their managers don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, that could be even recruiting, that could be budgeting, that could be setting policy where, you know, where testing always, no, yes. no testing maybe. <laughs> could be anything. Yeah. Exactly. So I noticed you, you've been uh, talking, talking lately a lot about DevOps and, and uh, DevOps pipelines and how testing fits there. How, how, would you, how would you describe that to our listeners? Well, I think Janet should talk about her holistic testing model because I think that captures yep. it very well. All right, so Janet. Yeah, okay. So one of the things that um, started thinking about was how testing fits into the whole process. So um, rather than thinking about agile or um, when we look at DevOps, which is kind of an extension, it's, it's basically the same thing, but bringing operations into the picture in a much more visible way. But when I started looking at the DevOps loop, it had testing as a phase. And I thought people are gonna get confused all over again. So we introduced the idea of the idea of holistic testing, which is taking the DevOps loop, but looking at it and thinking about how does testing fit in all around that loop. Mm -hmm. So the Dan Ashby had a we test here uh, continuous loop, which really kind of inspired me to think about a different way of looking at it because we truly do test everywhere along that loop. So our latest efforts have been thinking about um, how do we convey that message to the world in a nice, simple way. So um, that's when the holistic testing model kind of came into perspective. And you can check our blog posts on um, uh, agiletestingfellow.com. And we talk a lot more about that. Um, anything to add, yeah. Lisa? Yeah, for me, several years ago now, um, people like Abby Bangser and Ashley Hunsberger were really inspiring to me because I know the team I was on, we were trying to move to continuous delivery and we were really struggling. And they introduced me to the idea of let's visualize our pipeline. What actually happens when we commit a change to our code base or configuration? What has to happen to get it out to the hands of the users? And how do we visualize that? And 
you know, ideally you sit down with your team to do that. I couldn't get my team to do it, but I did it myself and started thinking about the questions I had at each stage in the pipeline and each test suite that we ran. And it generated a lot of good questions I could go bring to my team. What can we, what can we do to make this more effective? What can we do to shorten these feedback loops? Uh -huh. And it made me realize that we testers need to be involved on, on both sides of that DevOps loop. And I've kind of made it a mission since then to try to help testers. I think some testers kind of feel afraid to hear DevOps and they're like, well, I don't really know anything about those tools and it's not my place. But in fact, we need these, our testing skills in monitoring and observability and analytics and learning from production. So I, that's been my, my mission since then is in, in, in a lot of people helping me with that, like Janet, uh, to help people understand that and how they can contribute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To me, it has seen, seen a little bit that, that when Agile came, somehow testing wasn't anywhere. You need, needed to find a place for testing somewhere. And now with mm -hmm. DevOps, again, it's sort of disappearing a little bit to test automation and things like that. And so again, it needs to find its new place, which is very much there all over, like, like you're saying. Exactly, yeah. That's why we are using the word holistic testing because um, continuous testing mm -hmm. has been um, hijacked yeah, yeah. By, by a lot of the tool vendors, right? Mm -hmm. Continuous testing means automation and there is so much more to it than automation. Very much so. Very much yeah. so. So, are, are there any hints for somebody uh, from you? Any any hints for somebody who is maybe a, a tester in a, a, a normal agile team, and then the team is moving, or the organization is moving towards DevOps? What what should you do as such a person? What, what don't, can, be uh, don't what, be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And build relationships. That's one thing I learned from Katrina Cloakey's book, Practical Guide to Testing and DevOps. So she spends a lot of time in that book talking about how important it is to build relationships, not only with people in your team, but with people on other teams. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a platform team or site reliability engineering team or whatever, just to get to know those people. And I put that into practice at, at my last few jobs and found it just incredibly valuable. It's, Somebody asked me to help them test. Oh, we're switching our deployment pipeline tool to this other tool. Can you help us write a test plan for that and help us test it? Uh, uh, well, fortunately, I already know people on the platform team who have been working on it and I can talk to them and say, what are the risks? What should we look for as we're implementing this new tool? Uh, you know, what do we need to document? What, what do we need to do? And knowing those people, is, that's the key. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, lots of the listeners to of, of a podcast are actually not testers, agile team uh, members mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for agile team members? How much should everybody test? How how can they be more involved in testing? Maybe any any guidance from you? Well, again, uh, let's let's reverse what Lisa just said. Uh, making those relationships. If you have testers on your team, go talk to them, ask them what can we do to help? What can we do to make it better? What can we do um, to think about testing? Because there's a lot of things that uh, developers or even product owners or anybody else can do to think about testing. A really good example Lisa just said was, what are the risks? But talk about those early and then think about how can you mitigate those risks? Mm -hmm. It might not be by testing after the code is written. There's maybe a whole lot of things we can do before we even start to write the code. So building relationships in the other direction, looking in and using the skills that the testers might have can yeah. share. Yeah, as a Janet and I have, you know, for a couple of decades now, I've been trying to explain to people that quality is a whole team responsibility. The whole team yeah. needs to own it. Yeah, yeah. And yes, we need yeah. specialists, like we need specialists in other areas to help people learn those skills. But we all have to, you know, everybody has to try to get a handle on how can we build that quality into the product? Because we can't, you know, I've heard for years and years as a tester, you can't test quality in at the end. Even in the 90s, we were saying that. So, Mm -hmm. um, so getting people conscious of it and one of the first one of the first questions you should ask, like Janet said, what are the risks? How can we mitigate it? What do we need to test? How can we test it? 
Yes. Absolutely. Wow, that's good. I got a question here about the core of agile testing. Is there a core? What what is the essence, the core of agile testing? What, what, what do you think in your own words? Collaboration, working with the other team members to get to get the understanding of, of what it is we're building, why we're building it, but really thinking about how can we as a team make sure this is the right thing to build, mm-hmm. make sure that it is built right. Um, I'm not sure if that's the core. Mm-hmm. Lisa? I think, I think one thing that's really important, the teams I've been on that were successful in becoming high-performing teams, delivering high-quality product and making our customers super happy, we started by having a conversation with everybody on the delivery team. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is quality to us? What does it mean? What level of quality do we want to achieve? How are we going to get there? And making a commitment because we know things are going to get in our way. And if we're not really committed to it, we'll just throw up our hands and say, well, we can't, this isn't designed for testability. So we're not going to try to test this or we won't try to automate or whatever it is. Um, being committed to overcoming those difficulties together and like collaboration, communication is instrumental in that too. There's some, you know, I don't know the statistics, but I'm sure that some huge percentage of bugs in software are miscommunications. Mm-hmm. So a team communicating well together, collaborating together, having that prerequisite of psychological safety that successful teams need, um, that's the foundation to me. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much so. Um, yes. Good, good. Um, all, all the knights have to get together to fight those dragons, right, Kari? Yeah. <laughs> good, good. yeah Can't be a one person job. Yeah, exactly. Everybody <laughs> together. That's true. Um, so, if you think about, so going back to professional testing and, and, and people who are doing that for a profession, what, what are the basic skills these days that the professional needs to know? Well, all, all the testing skills that they ever had, please don't throw those away because you need them, right? But how can we take and, um, because the tester on a team, I'm uh, both Lisa and I are uh, proponents of embedded testers on a team, helping the team, right? Um, these days, some teams have testers, some teams don't, but bringing those skills to the team and and helping them, the team decide uh, where is the best way to use those skills? Mm-hmm. For example, uh, developers, um, they can be exploring their code using exploratory testing techniques before and while they're coding, right? So there's a lot of things we can share that makes sense to do earlier versus leaving it all till after the code is written. Mm-hmm. So don't throw your deep testing skills away, but how can you use them and share with the rest of the team? That's my yeah, point. I would say for the last 10 years that that I was on a software team or more than that, really, because there's a trend I see of, of agile teams <laughs> having fewer and fewer testers compared to the number of people writing code wow. uh, and doing other jobs. And so I started to see myself more of a consultant. I'm going to transfer my skills to other people. I'm going to pair with them. I'm going to get them to ensemble with me so that we can learn things like Janet says, the exploratory testing skills, bringing them new ideas to help with shared understanding. Like, oh, I just went to a conference and learned about example mapping from Matt Wynn. I think it could help us have a shorter cycle time because we understand what we're going to deliver better. So are you willing to try it? And trying to influence the team to, to try new things to make the quality better. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's not an easy thing to do, but we can't solve all the problems by ourselves. We've got to get the whole team engaged. One of the other differences, I think, is that because we're breaking things down into smaller chunks, mm-hmm. we don't have to do a lot of the, the really big work because we're testing as we go, we're thinking about it. Um, but there is a tendency sometimes to forget the big picture. So a feature, right? What is it you're delivering? Remembering that we still have to test that all together and not just the small chunks. So there's a, a kind of this trade-off, I think, too. I like that. Uh, I think uh, that's gonna. Ha- I think you are going to bring some of these topics out in in your next work, which is I don't know, 
and because next... your future next step <laughs> as a fellowship there's other things i'm sure can you uh, oh, no. dana's got a really cool <laughs> thing she's working on oh we're working on a couple of things um First of all, we're working on a new course, mm -hmm. um, testing and continuous delivery. So a lot of the things we were talking about, um, very much like our, our original course, which was um, holistic testing strategies for teams um, or testing on agile teams, uh, but with the focus on that DevOps loops, the continuous delivery. The other thing that I'm working on with um, Selena Delisi, which is different, my first um, thing that I'm working on without Lisa, well, she's reviewing, <laughs> she's reviewing, um, but is on quality practices assessment, um, trying to, so how can people look at their quality practices and uh, apply it to their own team? How are we doing? So there's a couple of things in the works. Yeah, and I've actually used their quality uh, assessment model to, to help a team and found it incredibly useful. So it's a big, it's big. Wow. Is that part of your new freelancing also, Lisa? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the yes. things I can offer to people. Thanks, yeah. thanks to Janet teaching me how to do it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I had to learn a lot of new skills. Always space for new skills, always space. It sure. becomes, sounds like that could be a place of further cooperation. I know Janet was some years ago uh, training for Know It in Finland. And so maybe there's time for another another gig like that for uh, maybe both yes. of this time. <laughs> always, always the possibility since we can start traveling again a little bit. But a lot of the things we do now is remote. True. Right. Well, now, a lot remote, more remote than before. We yep, had. for sure. Absolutely. That's how it is. Um, all right. Hey, so uh, I think we can wrap it up. Um, I'd like to thank very much both of you for uh, joining this podcast. Uh, is there anything else you would like to convey as uh, sort of last words for our audience? Um, please follow us. Um, we are next. So we have a, a video chat as well. Um, Donkeys and Dragons. which On so YouTube, the, yeah. On YouTube. And our next guest will be Kari. So please join us for that. And, um, but yeah, follow us on Twitter, uh, Jana Gregory CA or LinkedIn, easy to find. Yeah, at Lisa, I'm Lisa Crispin everywhere. So it's easy. And we love to talk to people and hear your stories and answer questions. And it's, we have a great software testing community and we feel really grateful too. for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love following you both on social media. Excellent. Ideas coming out from from you too. Great. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, dear audience, thank you for uh, being here. Um, if you would like to hear about anything in next episodes, just drop us an email at uh, agile agent at now it fi, or just type something in the comments of this video uh, podcast. So thanks again. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Janet. Until next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.